All right, working on this uh, four-speed train here. Saw that 67 shovel head. So, uh, so we got this cleaned up a little bit. Uh, put a new race in here. So that has to be fitted now. And I got to check these case races here. They're, this one's sticking out a little bit. Not sure why that is. This one here looks like it's in all the way. So I got to see if these have been damaged from the guy that worked on it last time. So. Got a bunch of stuff to get a deal with here. So there's new gear here we're gonna fit up. New Andy gear, this is the old gear. So the difference in these gears now is that Andrews is now put an O-ring groove right here. Put an O-ring. So that'll stop the oil from coming down the spline. And that'll stop one of the leak sources on four-speed trannies. So basically it's like what five speeds do, they have an O-ring in here. Except they do it a little bit differently, but same result, there's an O-ring. So anyway, that's the difference on the gems. Or not gems, excuse me, on the Andrews gear. That'd be this one. Yeah, that number right there. So they started doing this a couple years ago. So that's why we're not going to use this gear, because we're going to upgrade to the seal. We'll keep that washed. So this gear is still good, but we're updating. All right. We're also getting rid of this crap here too. All right, so where's my camera shaft? So these bozos, what they did was they had the wrong um, gear set in here. This is a loose needle bearing cluster gear that they put torn to needle bearings into it and held them in with glue. Then this was the loose needle bearing counter shaft that did not fit in the thick torrent and bearings, so they sanded this down with some rough paper, about four or five thou, and then they pushed it all together. And I wonder why it didn't last. So this is the new counter shaft right here, which is our correct one. So I got to make sure these bushings are good, and I got to find out why that's not in all the way. So that's where we're at, plugging along. Okay. All of this stuff has to be figured out before you can assemble a tranny. And when I'm all done doing all this fitting, then I'm going to, go on, I'm going to JB weld up all the top of these studs in here so the oil will not leak down these studs out the bottom, which is another source of oil leaks on four-speed trains that nobody seems to know about. And I remachined this one last year, so that was the last thing I did. That was a video show back, I think. <sighs> All right, so here's our new Andrews counter shaft. All right, it already comes rusted. Look at that! What a what a bonus package there. Now the bearings only rub out here and over here, so it doesn't really matter. Now that one there is getting close. That's just oil and grease buildup. That's fine. So I don't like rust on new parts, but it doesn't matter on this one because it's not going to hit that. Okay. Nice and loose. That looks about right. That's not going in there. Looks like it should. I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. Okay. So, not sure what's going on with that. So, let's see how tightly that goes in there. Get a beating tool. the truck. Yeah, close enough. All right, let's see what happens here. Back a little bit so I don't nail it with a hammer. We'll use our small hammer. Seems like that was in there pretty good. Got a little rust on it. 
major issue on that. Don't know why it wasn't all the way, probably because it moved. The hole looks pretty good, it's got a little rust in it, but nothing serious. Ah. Trying to get the towel where I can get to it here. Okay, now wipe out this hole here a little bit. All right, no rust in the hole now. Looks good. Okay, why will this not go on here? It did go on there. Nice and loose, look at that. So, when things are loose like this, it knocks, it lets the, the gears separate on the mesh on the teeth and it makes the teeth their way out here to be like they're supposed to be and the teeth want to break off because they're not supposed to be pressured out there. So these are really loose, that's not really good. This one's loose too, but you can't feel that up and down like that in it. Well, this one's pretty loose, I don't like it. So do we have anything that's better than this? I don't know if they make anything better than that. These aren't made very good anymore. So we'll have to see. So that means I gotta find some parts. So let's see what we got here for a diameter. Looks like around seven seven eight on that, and we're around one and eighth on the OD. All right, let's go see if we got some parts here. Damn tripod back. Okay, over here I got a big stack of crap out there, up there. Now somewhere over in here is a bunch of darn parts. I hide them for myself. Or more likely they got left here when I was done doing those trannies. Okay, this one's a five over. Another five over. Five over. That's about five. It says this is a five. Sure got a lot of fives. Uh, standard. Clutch side. That'd be left hand. We need a right hand. Of course, that's the one we don't have, probably. That's the one we need. What are all these things here? These are clutch so I can tell there's a big hole in them. Okay, here's a 76 to 79, which has a bigger hole in it. Let's see how big this hole is. Like it's 759. So much was our other one? 58, wasn't it? And we're at 777. What do I do with it? Seven fifty eight is a lot smaller than seven seven seven. So obviously these are made completely different. Twenty thou different to be exact. Okay, so this is what we need. This is not gonna work. Okay, it looks like I'm out of the one I need. At least it's not over in this pile. What else do we got? That's a 34 number. I'm almost out of that. See, I've got a couple left. Yep. Junk. Okay, what do we got here? Counter shaft left side. That's a straight hole. That ain't going to help me any. Those are straight holes. They don't help me either. What was in here? Ooh, there's something in here. These are straight hole versions, so they don't help me either. Alright, so we're striking out. 
Yeah, I'm supposed to have every one in stock, and the only one I don't have is the one I need. What a shocker. Okay, let me go check inventory and see if I have one hidden somewhere. We'll be back. All right, we're back. So, we found a few parts. Okay, I found uh, one of my dad's old ones, which have been sitting around for you know, 30, 40 years. And then I found a new one I bought recently. So, that one fits really, really tight. As in it doesn't go in the hole. That's more than just rust. So that one's too tight. Maybe this one will work better. We got about twenty thou clearance for that worn out bush in there, so that's no good. Let's see what we got on this one. A lot tighter than that other worn out one is. Oh yeah, 760 instead of 776, that's 16 thou smaller. That's a lot of slop. That's a lot better. You can barely hear it now. Now it's down to about 4 or 5 thou at least. Yeah, maybe 8 in play, but 4 or 5 at least. Much, much improved. Okay, I'll have to obviously get some inventory here for this stuff. Okay, now the other one, this is standard on the bushing side. This is a lot tighter too, it doesn't rock nearly as much. That'll make the seal work a lot better when it's tight like that. So this one's 62. I think that's about what this measured. It is. Even though this one feels a lot looser. It's looser in one plane, but it must be, I mean, tight in one plane, but it must be loose in a different plane. It definitely feels a lot looser. Even though it measures the same. That's weird. This one doesn't rock nearly as much. Hard to tell. It obviously feels a lot looser. Definitely, definitely feels looser. All right, well, see how worn it is. It's not worn very much on the inside face in here. That'll be on the surface right here. So, well, we can either put it in there or we can leave it alone so the measure the same the very tip is bigger maybe six six three on the tip and this is six six two. Uh, yeah, it's not enough. I'm only talking half a third of a third difference. But. Hmm. Definitely feels looser. All right, I'm gonna leave it. I am gonna put a new one on the other side though. Okay, now I guess we're gonna put that in somehow. So we gotta get all the way through here down to there. We just happen to have an installation tool right here we can use. We're not gonna hurt it by beating on it. 
So that means we'll beat on it. Push with. So now you can push it right in there, see? Got the beat on that right there. Now we can either beat on it with a hammer or we can go into in the hydraulic press. So. Quick and simple. Beat it in. Okay. So that's in there now. Hopefully that will stay for it. We only had a little bit of light pressure going on. It wasn't too heavy. Loctite on it this one. So we put some sleeve retainer Loctite on it to give a little extra holding power to it. So slip that on there. And give it a little bit more motivation to stay put. It's hard to get your finger wrapped all the way around, but. Gonna get it all the way around the other side. There we go. And we'll beat it back in. Okay, all the way down. Way. Yeah, we'll have to keep that tool over there, huh? It's pretty specialized. Some people thought that was just a piece of junk laying there. You can make tools out of all kinds of things, see? Okay, this is clutch side standard. We're going to leave this. We're not going to change out this one. I'll put it back in this package. Save it for next time. Actually reorder the one I used. I'm not be in trouble. Or out to machine these out so I can use them. That'll be the other option. Okay, so that's, this is one more junk part we're not going to use. All right. Wipe off any excess Loctite. I don't see any, but quick wipe just to make sure. Okay, now let's see how this fits in here now. No, it doesn't want to go in. So that means we have a alignment issue. Oh yeah. So we have an alignment issue right now. So see how the shaft does not line up with the one down the hole down there. Whoop. It doesn't go in. So we're trying to go straight down. See how it hits? It's like an eighth of an inch off. See over there. Big gap on this side of the shaft right here. See. So this shaft's not going in for some reason. So that's called a big time something's not right. So when you see a lot of burnished metal right there, probably means that thing is in sideways. Of course it would have been nice if we knew that beforehand, but oh well. It's easy how the stuff you find out after the fact. Okay, so now I have to knock this one out now. Definitely see the torn up metal right there where they beat it in pretty hard. So it might have been an oversized one they beat into a 
a standard hole, or maybe it was a worn out hole that they wasn't quite worn out for a five. So either way, it's not going square. Now, what's keeping it from being square? It doesn't appear to have a bunch of dirt or anything under it. Put some beads on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it. Actually, I'll probably just knock it out and put another one in there now. And we'll just go ahead and mark it top so I can see where I'm at. Worst case, we'll flip it when we put it back on. We'll turn it 180 degrees and see if that helps us. But right now, we're just going to go ahead and knock this thing out. Of here. See what's going on with this thing. Where's that one we weren't going to use? Standard. So you never know what's been done before you got a hold of it. Okay, that's 25. So that's the standard size, should be. Yep, this one's 26, 27. Okay. Case. See a lot of torn metal on that thing in there. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's pretty torn up looking. Not sure what that's all about. <laughs> pretty nasty looking, whatever it is. Can't really get a file in there because it's below our surface. Yeah. See if I can clean up a little bit with a file, maybe, or a scraper or something. Let's see. Let's try my carbide scraper. That actually does cut metal a little bit. Maybe we can shave off some high spots a little bit if there's anything to catch. Sure, if it's really taken off all that much. Camera's a little high there, I guess. Kind of smoothing the whole area over a little bit. All right, take a little fuzz off, see. Definitely. Oh yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, they went in there sideways and put a big brooch out, a big chunk of metal on this thing. All right. Let's see. The shaft was off far to the bottom and that's how they broached it out too it dug in on the bottom so it dug into the hole like this digging in so that's why it's my line it's off wonderful Let's see if it's a concentricity issue. 180, 182, 183, 184, 184, 179. So that's got a lot of wear issues, not round. That's not good. Let's see if this one's any better. 180, 79, 180, 81. It's getting where it belongs. Yeah, same issues, 83, 84, 86, holy crap, that's bad. <laughs> this is brand new Harley, there we go. American made stuff here, we don't buy trap around here. Just because it is crap doesn't mean we do it on purpose. 
That is the problem with Eastern products. Let's see, Eastern. Not as good as Taiwan a lot of times. Maybe better in China. Debatable. Okay, so we need to go up. Cheating up. Okay, so if we take this one here and measure this again. 81, 76 is our low side. And this caliper's not very high either. Let's get a micrometer out. This is not a ball mic like you're supposed to use, but it'll do what I need to do. Four, three, three, two and a half, two. Okay, there's our low spot. Ooh, geez, that's a hole. Look at that. Four. One and a half. Okay, that thing's got a big hole. Okay, where's that new one at? Three. And look at that. Tapers down to... Oh, shit, that thing's bad. That's way worse than the... the other. Look at that taper in that hole. Turn 180, see what it does that way. Oh, this side's square. No, it's tapered the other way. Yeah, so the... Uh, yeah, these are... Yeah, these pretty well suck. So if you think this hole is square, is concentric to the OD or straight, you're dreaming. The quality of these parts are horrendously bad. Jeez, these things are just pure crap. Okay, so in this case, it might help us, but... Alright, so it'd be nice if they actually made parts that were good, but... Yeah, we can always hope for that. We're not going to get it, but it'd be nice. Ooh, there's a hole. I dropped way into it. Not as bad as that other one, but still a hole. Okay, it's five thou. Yep, there's a negative one. This is our bad hole. So this is our whole area right here. We'll mark that on this side so we don't confuse it with the other side. Okay, so that means the shaft is going to go like this. We were too low, so if you put that 180 around, that might help us center it up to go in that hole correctly. So we're going to put this side up and see if that does a trick for us. Put our sleeve retainer Loctite here to help fill in the, the massive crater they stuck in here. This stuff will fill up to 20 thousands. That crater is probably 8 thou deep, I bet. Okay. Put a liberal amount of super snot on here. Okay, so that's our low spot. Put that in there like that. Okay. And I gotta figure out we're gonna put this thing in. I need to push down through here with a small hole because I already put that side in. If I didn't have that side in I can do this a lot easier. So I'm going to try one chance doing it without it, and I'll take the thing back out. That. beating utensil and I got some spacers here. I need something flat to push against. Okay, let's see how close this is. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll try that initially with this. See what happens here. Bad way to do things, so Let's see if it makes any difference. Alright, drop everything on the floor. That always helps. I'm gonna take that out. Put that in there straight. The trick is to try to get the bushing to go in square in the case. It's really hard to do when you're doing something stupid like this. Keep a nice firm shot. Hopefully it'll self-center. Oh no, it's going in a big time sideways. It's following the other screwed up hole. Yep. It's doing exactly the same thing the other one did. This is what we do not want to do. Okay, so that gets it back flattened out. Yeah, it's starting to look better. See how it pulled a big chip up down there. Not helping it any. Okay, starting to go more square. Now we need a bigger hammer because Loctite's starting to do its job. hammer. I also would help if I was on my workbench doing this, but oh well. That's how you would do it at home. Going slow. See a chip it peeled out. The Loctite's starting to do its job now, which means it's getting harder and harder to beat it in. <clears throat> which means it's not going to want to go much further. Have to make it go further. If in doubt, hit it harder. Definitely hard against that surface. Hard against that surface. Hear that real metallic ring? That means you're bottomed out. Okay, so that one is in there. Definitely pulled aluminum all the way around it. Not the best scenario there at all, obviously. Now, let's see if the shaft will actually go in where I want it to be. Not quite. It needs to go this way. So what I'm going to have to do is cheat. Stick in there like this. Manipulate it over a little bit. Now it goes in. Not the preferred way to do anything, believe me. to go a gasket surface a little bit a 
I can see a little bit of a gap on this side of the bush in here because that's the way it caught. Okay, let's try making sure it's all the way down one more time. Get myself again. Okay, this is the one we're using. This is the one we're using. See, see how it binds in going in? does go. All right. So that pretty well sucks is what that is. Okay. So now what we're going to have to do is get these things to lock themselves in. If this stuff moves, it cocks, you have problems stop it from moving. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to scrape off all this extra material here that has been torn up in there. So I'm only the first guy jamming in sideways. I didn't help it out much. See, I can't get any more aluminum to come out of there. Blow on a little bit here. Okay, that just kind of blows the Loctite around a little bit. So now what we're going to do is... Take our capillary action 290. It will actually suck in and fill up any void. We're going to fill the voids up in this case. This one should be all the way down, I hope. Yep. See, I didn't move any. Okay, so we're going to take some of this Loctite. I'm going to stick it right inside of this nasty looking hole right here. And we're going to let that stuff just soak on in there. And it's going to fill in any void there is that it can get to. And then lock it in. We'll let that sit up overnight so it'll suck in there. So that'll go in there and fill up any voids there is. Now this other one down here should have been all the way down already. I'm not sure if that moved or not. So let's try that again to make sure that one's all the way down. It's all the way down. Make sure this still lines up correctly. It's like it's supposed to. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of this here. I'm going to pour it right on top of this. Right there. And let it soak on around. Doesn't look like it wants to go. a lot more in there than it needed, but it's all right. So whatever it wants to soak in there will soak in. It will seal itself up. Same as up in here. All right. So no matter how you look at that, that's a pile of crap. But at least it lines up and the counter shaft's not wobbling around like it was. So the other thing we can do while we're letting this sit up overnight, we can go ahead and put a little Loctite around the, the big case race here. So it 
you do on that is you put a big drop it on a screwdriver, poke it wherever you want to go, and let it soak in. So it's right there. And let it go down and it'll go in and it'll suck in there and seal itself in too. If there's any excess it will go around the circle. If there's no excess it just soaks it all up and it won't go around the circle. So we're going to go around the circle right now. See? See this one's sitting over on this side. We'll level it back out and it'll be fine. It's always good to let this stuff seal itself in if you got the time to let it sit. In this case, we're going to have to have it time because the doors have to seal in. Okay, it's just going to run around there and connect with the other side like that. Flatten it out. Let it go back. All right. So that's about all I can do in this case for today. On this part of it. Yep, all of this stuff slows down the uh, rebuilding of the training. All right, so we're gonna let that set up. Figure out what's gonna happen. All right, I'll be right back. All right, here's the fun you don't get to see. You gotta find all the parts are missing, so. So you only had one of the counter shaft washers that go inside of the gear here. Because remember they didn't have the right parts. So they had this part in a place where it didn't belong. So I have to take this and bead blast and try to get all the epochs here, whatever the hell they got glued in here out of here. Getting scraping the knife's not getting it all out, so I'll blast it out. Hope that'll get it out. There's a snack ring groove down in there, about three quarters of an inch down in there. I don't know if you can see it, and that's where this is supposed to go. And then the washer hits up against this, whoop, right like that. That's what keeps the thrust, the bearings from going through the middle of the cluster gear. So I have to get that all cleaned up. So I have to go find the two locks for that, which I did, or snap rings, I mean. Here's a brand new washer from Gary Bang. That was back in uh, 95 when that was packaged. Nice current production. So that'll give me the piece I need for that. These are the counter shaft washers they did not have in there. So these go against the spacer down in there, or the bushing we put in. That sits right on top of that, right there. That's why it has that wear mark in it. These are used, these got used and new mixed in here, so. Intermixed. Some are new, some are used. Here's a new one, so. These come in different thicknesses, so. We won't know what we need for these until after we're uh, done. You know, until I put the cluster assembly in here. So right now I'm just getting everything ready to go because I can't do anything else in the tranny right now. So once I get this all where I can put the snap rings in here, then I'll go ahead and get the new counter shaft put in there and new bearings. Figure out if these are the standard bearings are going to work. They should, hopefully. And then uh, if not, I got to do oversize. Get that all set up, set the end play up inside the case, and I'll get the counter shaft part handled. And then I gotta hone out the, the new bush in the case over there for the high gear, which is standard bearings again. I gotta measure all this stuff and do it. I gotta clean all the goop off of this. Gotta push the seal over here. Gotta make sure the main shaft fits in here. It's a lot of stuff you gotta do. So here's the main shaft. It looks like it's new, so I'm gonna try to reuse it. This has goo on it right now. There it goes. Got a little clearance. Here it. Good fit. So we just clean the goo off, but it needs to be cleaned a little bit better. So at least we can reuse the uh, the main shaft here. Saves a lot of money. So, but all this stuff just has to be put together correctly. All of this stuff was done incorrectly before. They had washers all mixed matched and not where they were supposed to be. Other ones are missing. So 
Anyway, it's all part of getting everything all organized, so we will come back to work on it. We can work on it. Yeah, I hate that rust in there. So, all right, so I'm done about now for what I can do. Like I said, I'm about to make all of this stuff over here fit. These bushes are tied on the cluster gear here also. I'm going to have to make this stuff fit around these parts like they're supposed to. See the bushing supposed to slide down. There it goes. One of these was pretty tight. I forget which one it was, but... Maybe this is the one that actually went down. I don't know. Yeah, that one actually does fit. Look at that. At least something fits. It was a height issue. Yeah, it looks like the washer should fit. See, now you got to find a washer for that because I don't know, think we had that one. We... Is this... See, this is the low gear washer, not the second gear washer. two of these in there. This is third gear washer. It goes over here, see. There was two of those. It's only supposed to be one. This one's all torn up. This is a new one they put in. They use one they put in on the counter shaft where it don't belong. This is a new one. They make these in different thicknesses to shim third gear, so hopefully we can use this. I'll have to get a new snap ring to go with it. It'll be this one right here in the baggie. I know where that is. So there's second gear retaining ring. See what I I don't see the washer though. There's a big washer. Yeah, it looks like the washer. Yep, hey, there you go. It all stacks together. Almost. Doesn't want to go on there though. So, it's just been warped. Appears to be flat. Obviously does not want to go on. Should not have to force it on like this. It should just slide right on. That's a little snug. See, it's not quite the amount of tension you're supposed to have on a new part. So, you take a file in there and file it to fit. Assuming that's the problem. Let's tight this way. Or you put a new one on that fits better. And yeah, we'll make a decision. You don't want this to jump your high gear, your second gear down here. So like I say, it's just a matter you can hand file this thing until it fits or you can just put a new one in there that might fit better. Do we have any items around here to, to use? That's the question. Maybe someplace, but not right in front of me. Yep. Not right in front of me. All right, we'll make a decision about what we're going to do about that tomorrow. I tend to reuse the custom parts, even though it takes time to make things fit. So if you keep doing this enough times, it'll eventually wear itself in, right? Or I'll go get a file and do a little filing. I've been known to waste a, while, a lot of time doing stuff like this. See, this is just wasting time right now. So what we're doing is wasting time. All right, well, we'll figure it out. Obviously, that one doesn't fit very well. All right, that's going to be it for tonight. We'll be back on this tomorrow.